Being here, it is now time for members' statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I'm proud to rise today to recognize the birthday of Carol Joseph Waitiwa, who was born on May 18, 1920, in Wadowice, Poland. He's a man who became known as the Pope. St. John Paul II was elected by the Second Papal Conclave of 1978 and adopted his predecessor's name in order to tri for tribute to him. He served as Pope of the Roman Catholic Church from 1978 until his death on April 2nd of 2005. It is one of those dates, Mr. Speaker, that I'm sure that we can all remember what we were doing when we heard this sad news. St. John Paul II was a widely admired figure, respected by Roman Catholics and non-Catholics alike, and as Pope, he traveled to every corner of the earth. We were very fortunate to host him in Ontario on two occasions in 1984 and again in 2002 when he celebrated World Youth Day together with 800,000 young people. He dedicated his life and papacy to international understanding, peace, and the defense of equality and human rights. St. John Paul II significantly improved the Catholic Church's relations with Judaism, Islam, the Eastern Orthodox Church, and the Anglican Communion. His message of hope, embodied in his famous phrase, be not afraid, inspired millions around the world, and his canonization ensures that it will endure into the future. I was pleased to participate today in the celebration of St. John Paul II's birthday today at Queen's Park, together in representing our leader, Patrick Brown. And I'd like to especially thank the youth present here today from the Polish Highlanders Association for enriching the celebration, not only with their costumes, but with also their music and singing, bringing Polish tradition to Queen's Park and uh, showing how diverse Ontario is. Mr. Speaker, as a Polish descendant myself, I am proud to rise and honour St. Pope John Paul II. His life, his legacy will always be remembered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. Ten years ago, the General Motors car assembly plant in Oshawa was one of the most productive auto plants in the world. It topped the JD power list for quality, and year in and year out, the workers at GM kept it that way. Oshawa was the crown jewel of General Motors. GM workers were promised that keeping Oshawa a high-quality, high-productivity producer would ensure the survival of the plant. They also made money for General Motors. Lots of it. In 1996, General Motors Canada was the first Canadian company to register a billion-dollar profit. At the time, 40 percent of GM's North American profits were coming from the 10 percent of their workforce that was running the Oshawa plant. The workers at GM Oshawa have invested millions of dollars through payroll deductions back into our community. They've helped to expand the hospital, build a cancer center, the YMCA, UOIT, stock the food bank, and generated millions more for the United Way. Their efforts have contributed billions of dollars into the Canadian economy, and the jobs at the Oshawa plant matter not only to our community, but Ontario and to Canada as a whole. Following the 2008 financial crisis, GM has returned to profitability after shedding its debt, thanks to the investment of the people of Ontario and Canada, as well as sacrifices made by the workers and retirees. While record profits should have resulted in reinvestment into the Oshawa plant, it has not. We have never felt more uncertainty about the future of General Motors in Oshawa than we do now. It is time for GM to commit and bring new product to Oshawa. Our community has earned it. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in the House to recognize the proud achievements of outstanding citizens in my riding of Burlington, who were recently honoured at the annual Burlington's Best Award on May 11th. Burlington has been recognized by Money Sense magazine as the best mid-sized city for three years in a row and the third best city in Canada. These accomplishments wouldn't be possible without the selfless contributions of our citizens. The Burlington's Best Awards provide an opportunity to thank those residents whose dedications contribute to make Burlington such a wonderful place to live, work and play. This this year's awards featured seven award winners from among 22 nominees. Award categories included the Senior Person of the Year, the Junior Person of the Year, Arts Person of the Year, the Environmental Award, Community Service Award, Heritage Person of the Year, and Citizen of the Year. This year's winner of Citizen of the Year was Brenda Hunter.
Brenda's leadership and dedication to the health care needs of the residents of Burlington and beyond through her work with the Joseph Brand Hospital Foundation continues to transform and inspire our community. As a leader of our hospital's Our New Era campaign, she played a major role in raising over $48 million of Joseph Brandt's $60 million donor campaign. She also successfully led the One Room at a Time campaign, which raised $400,000 in support of the new palliative care unit. I'd like to congratulate and thank Brenda and all the winners of nominees of this year's Burlington Best Awards for their continued selfless service to our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member, the member from Nipissing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Financial advisors play a vital role in helping people retire with security and reach their financial goals. The financial services sector is a pillar of strength for Ontario's economy and contributes $8.4 billion in direct GDP and over 84,000 jobs. Ontario needs a competitive financial market for services that offers consumers a range of choices and protection, including access to small business financial advisors. However, the industry is concerned with the potential adoption of policies that have failed in other jurisdictions, policies that have made financial advice unaffordable. Ontario needs to be a leader in this regard, not a follower. We need policies to make financial advice more available to Ontarians, not less. Uh, speaker, I urge the government to end its pursuit of policies that will make financial advice unaffordable in Ontario. Instead, reforms should focus on strengthening the sector, including professional title protection for financial advisors, less red tape, and greater accountability for clients. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Prompt payment, Ontario. Payment delays are the most significant limit on efficiencies in the Ontario construction sector, and nearly 450,000 Ontarians who work in it. They, the delays create serious cash flow problems for subcontractors and for our hardworking tradespeople. Families in Ontario currently waiting up to four months for their loved ones to get paid for construction work already completed and certified. This withheld money is taking billions of dollars out of our economy and severely impacting Ontarians. They cannot wait months or years for prompt payment to become a reality because if they do, they face job loss and even bankruptcy. Payment delays mean lower employment, Benefit coverage for workers is reduced, apprenticeship opportunities are fewer, and the pool of bidders is reduced as trade contractors must limit their expenses due to the restriction in cash flow. In March 2014, the government recognized these issues. And in fact, the current Minister of Transportation introduced a PMB to address this issue. Unfortunately, it was scrapped just before an election, and since then, all we have is a review on the Construction Lean Act. Earlier this month, the report was submitted to the government, and I rise today to urge the government to immediately release the findings of the review to those that are most drastically affected by its outcome. We can no longer wait any longer. Those directly affected must be aware of the findings immediately. Thank you, Thank you very much, Speaker. Member Statements, Member from Trinity Spadina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to recognize and thank the nurses of SickKids Hospital in my riding of Trinity Spadina. Last week, I was honored to accompany the nurses of SickKids Hospital on their annual Take Your MPP to Work Day. Between visiting the dialysis unit, where I met a, a family of Syrian refugees receiving treatment and services, to the cardiology floor, where a team of nurses worked 24 hours around the clock, rotating jobs, charts, and working together to ensure the best care is given to their patients. The teamwork and the passion I saw from the nurses as sick kids was very moving. I'm proud to have them practicing in my riding. They are truly the highlight of our exceptional health care system. Thank you to all the nurses of Sick Kids Hospital for showing me the ropes, and thank you to all nurses across the province for critical care you provide to Ontarians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.
Reading member statement to member from Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I just want to wish congratulations to everybody who's here with Ellers Danlos and those who are supporting their friends and relatives with Ellers Danlos. And I'm going to read the proclamation that I presented to them, and we took a wonderful picture and we had a nice lunch. Congratulations to EDS Canada on the recognition of May as Ellers Danlos Syndrome Awareness Month. Um, Ellers Danlos Syndrome EDS is a genetic disorder involving mutations in connective tissue characterized by instability and dislocations of the joints. Skin that bruises, scars, and tears easily, arterial and organ rupture causing internal bleeding, shock, stroke, and premature death. There is neither routine screening nor a cure for EDS. Early and accurate diagnosis can provide opportunities for life-saving emergency medical plans and proper monitoring and improve quality of life. EDS is frequently misdiagnosed or undiagnosed. Improved knowledge can prevent generations of premature deaths, allow for effective management, improve quality of life, and reduce disability and pain. I am pleased to congratulate EDS Canada for their advocacy work on behalf of all Canadians and their friends and relatives who face challenges due to this genetic condition. We celebrate May 2016 as Ellers Danlos Syndrome Awareness Month in Ontario while eagerly looking forward to celebrating the opening of the first EDS clinic. And I want to say that the member from uh, Con Kitchener Conestoga is eagerly awaiting news, as am I, on when this clinic is going to open, as has been repeatedly promised by the Minister of Health. And and, uh, unfortunately, the uh, letters from his office are very Thank inclusive. You. Thank you. Further member statements from member from Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This year marks the 60th anniversary of the Rotary Club Toronto Don Mills. I rise today to recognize the contribution of this Rotary Club to the province and to the world. For the past 16 years, this Rotary Club has been promoting oral health and awareness among young children from junior kindergarten to grade six through the Brush Romania program, first in the city of Toronto and then across the province. Today, the program has reached over half a million elementary students across the province. Brush Romania is one of two big projects this Rotary Club is involved locally and provincially. In 2008, the club expanded this program to Armenia, where two mobile den dental clinics were created to better serve the children there. The club is also actively involved in a Rotary International project of global eradication of polio. Last March, the club started the End Polio Now fundraiser. The goal is to raise $100,000, which will go to eradicating polio worldwide. The $100,000 goal will become $500,000 thanks to a two-to-one match campaign by the Government of Canada and the Bill and Belinda Gates Foundation. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the three Rotarian members, Dr. Rafi uh, Kujin, Jennifer Boyer, and Ryan for, uh, Fogarty, who will be starting the six-day hike to Mount Kilimanjaro next month to raise funds for the World Polio Free. So I want to also congratulate this club for the 60th anniversary for the service above self, and I look forward to celebrating with them this evening as they celebrate the 60th anniversary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Unfortunately, homelessness occurs in too many communities in our province. In Etobicoke Lakeshore, we do have two excellent out-of-the-cold programs run by All Saints Kingsway Anglican Church and by St. Margaret's Church. This winter, my constituency staff were happy to assist the volunteers and parishioners at St. Margaret's by cooking and serving a hot breakfast for their overnight guests. Mr. Speaker, the program provides dinner, overnight accommodations, a full hot breakfast, and a bagged lunch to those who are homeless or hungry from November through April. St. Margaret's also offers its guests various forms of clothing and laundry services. A nurse comes in weekly to check out such problems as frostbitten hands and feet. Guests have many challenges to face when out on the street. Mr. Speaker, St. Margaret's volunteers and parishioners recently turned the tables when the program wound down in April by inviting the various Etobicoke Lakeshore groups who volunteered to assist with this year's program, including my staff, to a delicious evening of great food and conviviality at the church. Many thanks to Kara Wiggle, Terry Greer, Tanya Mola, and so many more people who so generously give of their time to support others through this wonderful program. Volunteering is a very rewarding experience in a friendly environment and where your time means so much to our communities most vulnerable when you participate in an out of the cold program. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It